Hey, welcome to Q&A, where you ask your questions and I do my best to give an answer. Uh, today's question is, in many ways, uh, connected to another question that I, I noticed there on Slido to do with progressive Christianity, um, which I probably try and give an answer to on Sunday. So I think this question and the next is, are probably interrelated in some way. And I think that they're worth spending time to look at because they reflect what happens when we do our theology from the standpoint of ourselves and what we think is right, rather than from the standpoint of God and from the scriptures? So let me read you the question and, and then I'll unpack it. The question is, how do you answer those who say that because God is neither male or female, then God is transgender? Um, I think Really, the probably the correct term is not so much that God is transgender, but probably God is non-binary. As I understand it, um, non-binary people don't identify as male or female, whereas transgender people identify as um, being the opposite. They, they they see a disconnect between their biological sex and their gender. Um, so, so I think really the question is saying because God is neither male or female, then then God is non-binary. Uh, and, and I think that it's a reflection, as I say, of progressive Christianity in my view. Uh, and and I want to say that, that it reflects a fundamental mistake that people make when they do theology, as I said, from the standpoint of ourselves and trying to make it about ourselves and fit God into our understanding and reduce them to our world and our concepts rather than lifting ourselves uh, up into, uh, and, into his sphere and taking our bearings from him. Because the fundamental mistake that people make when they try and make arguments like this, that because God is neither male or female, therefore um, he's transgender, is that they've reduced God to the same category as us, to being like us. Uh, the thinking goes that really in this sort of um, logical sequence is that whatever we are, God is the perfect expression of that. Whatever we are, God is that times X, and, and he's a perfect expression. Yet the problem is that, that God isn't a physical being. God isn't a created being. He's before all things, and in him all things are held together. In fact, John 4.24 says that God is spirit. We're created. We're physical beings. God is a spiritual being. That means that he's wholly other than that which he has created. Uh, creation is the expression of, of God's creativity. It's an expression of his character. It's an expression of of, of his power, but that doesn't mean that we are, because we're an expression of God, that we're in the same category uh, of being as God. In fact, uh, in Isaiah 55 verses 8 and 9, uh, God says, talks about how, how, how our thoughts are nothing like his thoughts and our ways are nothing like his ways because as high as the heavens are from the earth, in other words, as, as, as different as you could possibly get between heaven and earth, as far away as you could possibly get between heaven and earth, our ways and our thoughts are so different from his. And I think that's why in Isaiah chapter 45, uh, we, we talk read about how God is the potter and we are the clay. Uh, we are the clay in his hands. We are of a totally different category. And that means while gender categories like male and female apply to us as physical beings, they don't apply to God who's spirit. So to say that because God is neither male nor female, he must be transgender or he must be non-binary, as I said, I think the technical term is, is as a, as is as illogical as saying because the roads that we drive upon, the footpaths that we walk upon, uh, are neither male nor female, they must be non-binary. See how nonsensical that sounds? It's because we are confusing categories. Uh, and, and that's the problem when you start with yourself at the center instead of from uh, the standpoint of God and from the scriptures. Instead of starting with God and saying, well, who is he? Well, who does that make us in the light of that? And, and allowing him to interpret us, we try and reduce him into our understandings. And then we get um, category confusion and, and we have um, nonsensical questions uh, or expressions like this one. So, so how would I respond to something like this? Well, well I think the real issue is um, that is behind a question like this is, 
for me is why are some people working so hard to try and legitimize non-biblical expressions of sexuality if they don't believe in the Bible um, or in the God of Israel and the apostles? Um, it just seems to me that, that that's a question that needs to be addressed. Why do people seek so hard to rework scripture, to redefine scripture, to reduce God uh, to, to a category uh, like us in order to justify something when they don't believe in those things? I mean, is it, Think about it like this. You don't see those same people trying to redefine um, the Quran to justify their sexuality. And the reason I say that is suggests to me that it's not really about faith, but about culture. And I say that because underneath uh, Western culture is, is the, the foundations upon which it grew, which are the foundations of Christianity, its values, its principles, the, the, the value of justice, of women, of children, etc. All of these things undergird Western Christianity. Um, we can thank the, the early church for many of the freedoms we take for granted that have been come enshrined in custom and in law. So when I hear people talk like this, what I hear is people looking to, to justify their rebellion against God. And so that means I'm going to frame my response that way. And generally it's framed um, the, the same way when they ask these types of questions. Uh, basically, um, I'll just say to them something like, you know, you be who you want to be, uh, whatever that means. But if you want to embrace alternative forms of, of, of sexuality than just male or female. Um, that's your prerogative. Uh, but why do you need God to agree with that? Um, why do you want God to endorse your new categories? Why is it so important to you? And, and the reason I ask that, that that cat cuts straight to the real issues and can open up some, some meaning, more meaningful paths of, of dialogue. I mean, uh, if people are feeling estranged from God, uh, estranged from, from from culture, from society, um, then why not help people move toward him and be reconciled and, and restored to right relationship and learn to live out of that and the benefits of that, which reassigning categories and all that will never really deliver. Um, why, why, why not start there pastorally? So my response is to ask them why this is a big deal. Why do they want, why do they want God to, um, to, to agree with their categories? Why did, why is it such a big deal? And then begin to unravel that, uh, because it's, it's a cultural question, not a theological question. And they're just trying to legitimize pushing back against something historic. Um, and so rather than, than just get into a, to and fro, I want to to engage them to get them to begin to uh, grapple with why are they trying to reduce something um, to fit their ideas about God rather than let God speak for himself and begin to enlarge their sense of identity and personhood and bring the freedom that they are looking for. So that's how I would respond. Great question. Love to hear your thoughts. Um, as always, you know, I encourage you to post a comment, post your thoughts. Uh, you can drop me a line also, hamish at alc.org.nz. Uh, love to hear from you. Well, that's it. Until next time, God bless.